أعيدني أن لكم هذه الأفلام التعليمية التي تتناول الجانب العملي لمادة التشريح فنشاهد الآن هذا الشريط على أمل أن يحقق الفائدة المرجوة منه مع تمنياتي لكم بالتوفيق يقول الله تعالى وقل اعملوا فسير الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون صدق الله العظيم Notice that the pronatal teres lies edge to edge with the upper border of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Notice also that the flexor digitorum superficialis arises by a humeral ulnar head and a radial head. The radial head arises from the front of the radius edge to edge with a supernatal muscle. This radial head separates the supernatal from the flexor polices longus. This is the supernatal as it lies in the cubital fossa. This is the flexor polices longus muscle. It arises from the front of the radius and the interosseous membrane and is partly covered by the flexor digitorum superficialis. Its tendon passes deep through the flexor retinaculum to enter the thumb. In the hand, this tendon lies just medial to the thinner muscles. It's inserted into the base of the terminal phalanx. This is the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. It arises from the front and medial surface of the ulna and the interosseous membrane. It is covered by the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor carpi ulnaris. The ulnar nerve and artery lie between it and the flexor carpi ulnaris. The four tendons of the muscle pass in the carpal tunnel deep to the flexor retinaculum and spread to the medial forefingers accompanied by the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Each of these tendons gives origin in the palm to one lumbrical muscle. These are the lumbrical muscles. The first, 
the second, the third, and the fourth. The tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus perforates the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis and continues to get insertion into the base of the terminal phalanx. This is the ulnar nerve. It's accompanied by the ulnar artery in its lower two-thirds. But the artery and the nerve are separated in the upper third where the ulnar artery has an oblique course. All through its course in the forearm, the nerve lies between the flexor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus muscles. It supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Lower down, about 5 centimeters above the wrist, The ulnar nerve gives off its dorsal cutaneous branch which goes to the back of the hand and supplies the little finger as well as the ulnar half of the ring finger. It also has a palmar cutaneous branch which arises about the middle of the forearm and crosses superficial to the flexor retinaculum to supply the skin of the medial third of the palm. This nerve is very slender and is easily lost during the resection. Superficial to the medial part of the flexor retinaculum, the ulnar artery is lateral to the nerve just lateral to the biseiform bone, the ulnar nerve then divides into superficial and deep divisions. This is the superficial division of the ulnar nerve, which gives off palmar digital nerves to supply the skin over the little finger and the ulnar side of the ring finger. This is the deep division of the ulnar nerve which pierces the hypothenar muscles and supplies them and continues deeply to supply all the interosseous muscles medial two lumbricals and adductor pollicis muscle. This is the superficial division of the ulnar artery. It forms the main part of the superficial palmal arch. This arch lies immediately deep to the palmar aponeurosis and gives off the common palmar digital branches. Each artery divides into two palmar digital arteries which pass to the adjacent sides of two adjacent fingers. The superficial palmar arch is completed by a branch from the radial artery. This 
is the deep branch of the ulnar artery. It dips among the hypothenar muscles to join the deep palmar arch, which is formed mainly by the radial artery. This is the flexor, the chinaculum. It forms the anterior wall of the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel transmits the long tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, the long tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, the tendon of the flexor pollicis longus, in addition to the median nerve. This is the adductor pollicis muscle. It lies anterior to the first dorsal interosseous muscle. This is the adductor pollicis muscle. It lies anterior to the first dorsal interosseous muscle and is supplied by the ulnar nerve. This is the palmar interosseous muscle of the index finger. And this is the second dorsal interosseous muscle seen from in front. The palmar interossei adduct while the dorsal interossei abduct the fingers from the middle line of the middle finger. Here lies the thinner space and the mid-palmar space which are two facial spaces of the hand lying deep to the long flexor tendons. The thinner space lies lateral to the mid-palmar space and is separated from it by a facial septum passing to the third metacarpal bone. These two spaces are of surgical importance.